Good day and welcome back to the Flying Doctor channel. Today we're on a journey all the way to Sao Paulo from JFK International Airport in New York City. We'll get into some more details about the flight as we get off the ground, but in the meantime, sit back, relax, and get ready for the flight review. As with the majority of my flight reviews, we begin at a lounge. Today, we are visiting the Centurion Lounge in JFK. Like other lounges, there's a multitude of seating options that vary from individual workstations to intimate tables to enjoy a nice meal. I found the selection was limited and food quality was acceptable, but lacked the step above I expect from a lounge with this caliber name. After finishing my fruit and chicken, I figured out I could spend the remaining time I had before boarding by checking out the Sky Deck at the Sky Club. After standing in line for literally 40 minutes, it was finally my turn to head up the escalators and check out the space. For whatever reason, I thought this lounge would be less busy than the Centurion Lounge. Regardless, there still seemed to be enough available seating spread throughout the space. Unfortunately, none of that seating was outside. I sat down, tried out the food, and enjoyed the afternoon rush before heading to my gate. Today's flight is operated by a Boeing 787-9 and will cover more than 7,500 kilometers, lasting just under 9 hours. The excitement inside was nearly boiling over as this was the first time I would board a 787. The main topic of several memories as a kid signing up on the Boeing website for email alerts on their newest clean sheet type. Boarding pass scanned, I stroll down the jet bridge getting ever closer. As you reach the end of the jet bridge, the cabin interior welcomes you with a homey wood-like flooring. I was quite impressed with the immediate entry, though directly to the left in business class it was unfortunate to see a 222 configuration. This Latam Dreamliner is configured in a 3 class layout. The 30 business class seats up front are followed by 54 Latam plus seats with slightly more legroom than the 220 economy seats in the back half of the aircraft. I had intentionally booked the last row of the aircraft thinking that might make me more comfortable filming the interior of the cabin. However, the gate agent had changed my seat to be closer to the front in 23 Lima. Even though I found the front business class to be slightly aged, I might not have taken a close look at it. These economy seats look pretty nice, actually. There's an adjustable headrest, foldable cup holder on the seat back, decent legroom, and some items to keep you comfortable during the long haul south. After situating myself and realizing it was still rush hour outside, I couldn't help myself from staring out the window. One thing I didn't notice while filming was the camera struggling to determine the white balance. I can only assume this was due to the nature of the electronically dimmable windows. As we were pushed back from the gate, the safety briefing began, which today I managed to pay attention to. As we travel through South America on a magical journey without frontiers. Por favor, acompáñenos. Please, come with us. Guarde el equipaje de mano en el compartimiento superior o bajo el asiento With all the colors and friendly faces, it was an enjoyable minute or so of safety instructions I had previously heard dozens of times. Turning my attention out the window again, I noticed a couple of loose pieces of aviation tape that left me wondering if they would hold on after we left the ground. You might have noticed it earlier, but the patchwork of tape on this particular wing might raise concerns with some novice flyers. If you're in that crowd, or maybe you're a frequent flyer who has never seen this before, here are a few facts about aviation tape. While it may look like duct tape, it's actually made from aluminum, which provides strength, flexibility, and is resistant to corrosion. Aviation tape has a special adhesive used to secure the tape to a number of different aircraft surfaces including aluminum, composite materials, and painted surfaces. It is also designed to withstand harsh environments. Think temperature extremes at 40,000 feet and on the ground in the desert. 
It is also capable of withstanding the aerodynamic forces and pressures encountered during flight. And finally, it is used for temporary repairs like small punctures or cracks on the exterior surface of the wing. The lengthy taxi gave me a few more opportunities to observe some airlines and aircraft types that I don't frequently get to see. After lining up, the engine spooled up, propelling us down the runway and up over the North Atlantic Ocean. After popping out of the clouds, it did appear that the loose tape I saw earlier on the leading edge of the wing either flew off or is being pressed flat onto the surface by the wind. We made a few turns after takeoff to avoid other aircraft in this congested region before changing our heading south. As the sun fell below the horizon, the cabin lights mimicked an evening sunset. Shortly thereafter, FAs began with their first meal service. On hand tonight was a beef or chicken plate, and I opted for beef. Each meal was provided with a wrapped piece of bread with cream cheese. Opening the meal itself reveals three additional pieces of bread, the beef, and cooked veggies. Overall, the meal was pretty tasty. The beef wasn't dry, and the veggies each retained their respective unique flavors. Before trying to get some sleep, I figured I'd test out the IFE system and what kind of variety Latam has. The movie and TV catalogs were not extremely extensive, though I assume one would be able to find something to entertain themselves. The game list had some titles I had not previously seen in flights, reading options were pathetic, and the moving map was very disappointing. After a slight reminder of what dial-up used to be like, the in-flight map finally loaded. I assumed what was on the screen was the default view, but it turns out it's the only view in the system. It does scroll through a couple of different pages listing a number of flight stats, but the lack of user input available bored me, so I got some sleep. While packaged very similarly to dinner, the smell of breakfast gives off a very different feel than dinner. I don't recall there being options for breakfast, but I may be wrong. So, <clears throat> breakfast sandwiches, I don't know, plain bagel with a piece of ham, and cheese, and then some cream cheese in it. Does the job. One green grape, one purple grape, fresh. 
After eating, I wanted to brush my teeth, so I checked out the lab. Alrighty, well, here is the lab on the Latam Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. You know what? It feels relatively spacious in here compared to some of the other labs. I can actually, uh, you know, move my elbows up and down without twisting side to side. Anyways, we're about 45 minutes from landing, so there are other folks waiting to use this. I'll get in, get out, and get back to my seat. It was soon announced we had begun our initial descent into Sao Paulo. Dropping below 10,000 feet, it's time to summarize today's journey and my long haul experience with LATAM. Before boarding, I visited the Centurion Lounge and found the food selection was limited and below the quality I expect from Amex. I then tried to explore the Sky Deck at the Sky Club, but was disappointed the area was closed. The views from the lounge and bottomless coffee helped turn the trip back towards a positive direction. As I faced the Little Tom Dreamliner nose to nose and then entered through the boarding door, the welcoming foyer, crew, and soft, homey environment slowly suppressed the hustle and bustle I just left behind. Before I began this trip, one of the biggest concerns was being able to communicate effectively. Even though I don't speak Portuguese, all crew members I spoke to were capable of maintaining a conversation in English. With the largest mental roadblock bypassed, I was able to better enjoy my time during the flight and get a good feel for who Latam is. To me, the cabin appeared slightly outdated, but was maintained very well. Excluding a few minor blips during the takeoff and descent to landing stages, the air quality was excellent as determined by parts per million in the ambient air. The cabin temperature was appropriate and the humidity level for a majority of the flight stayed above 10%. The food quality for both dinner and breakfast was acceptable and appropriately portioned. Although I did not thoroughly investigate all of the features of the IFE system, I was left disappointed with the options related to the in-flight map. The blanket provided atop each seat was comfortable and sufficient for keeping me warm while I tried to sleep and the provided headphones are considerate for those who may have left theirs at home. Overall, I was content with my flight on Latam and wouldn't hesitate booking with them again in the future for a long haul flight to South America. If you've stuck around this long and are still watching, consider liking this video and subscribing for similar content in the future. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.